Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl is presented by UFC Fight Pass. See the best that UFC Fight Pass has to offer on the Fight Pass 24-7 stream, offering a constant channel of historic fight action all day, all night. Tune in, sit back, and enjoy a network created by fans for fans. Step into our world. UFCFightPass.com Hey guys, welcome back to Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl, presented by UFC Fight Pass, the show that interviews top-level MMA fighters and other experts in their fields about love, dating, romance, and that all-too-taboo subject, sex. I'm your host, Ashley Rebel Girl Evan Smith. Now let's talk about sex and violence. What's happening, hot stuff? What is up, all my naughty listeners? Uh, wow. Okay. So if you are in California, I hope you guys are staying dry. Today was wild, st- wildly stormy and uh, just not good. California people, we suck. We suck with bad weather. So stay safe, guys, if you're in California. And uh, today, just in general, started off wonky for me. Uh, it is our first podcast of the new year. So happy freaking new year to everybody. I hope your new year's going good. Uh, my day started off with uh, an USADA test at six in the morning. Not just pee-pee this time, uh, blood and urine. So good morning and <laughs> get stabbed in the morning. But yeah, start the new year off. So, uh, But yeah, uh, your girl can't complain, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, guys, so here's the part of the show where I give you a little update about what's going on with me. Same stuff as last week. If you're a consistent listener, I am preparing for a trip to Colombia to go get some stem cells uh, to fully heal. I'm probably, you know, 90% healed at this point, but um, I don't want to be in pain anymore. So I'm very, very fortunate that the amazing people at BioAccelerator in Colombia are sponsoring me for this procedure. And I'm very, very excited. Unfortunately, it will take about uh, six weeks for the recovery process. So that puts me an estimated uh, return date to the cage mid-2023. And that seems like a long way, but I've already fucking Hell waited. No. That's right around the corner. Three years! Oh my God! Right I can't... Someone asked me the other day, they're like, how long has it been? And, you know, like after the first two years, I kind of just stopped counting. And you long-term listeners know that, you know, I said that I became a happier person when I stopped focusing on, you know, when I was going to heal and just focused on the healing process and enjoying the journey and all that. And I am, I'm still enjoying the journey, but I can't fucking wait to be back in the cage. And the first step, well, there's been many steps, but um, the next step as of now is Columbia, stem cells, you know, heal up. It's about a six week process of healing. Um, and actually the stem cells don't even take full effect until six months after you get them, but I'm definitely not going to wait that long. Uh, so I'm really excited. I will be talking about it every fucking week because after three fucking years, uh, I see the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm so happy and I'm grateful that the UFC hasn't given up on me or you guys haven't given up on me and Zola, you haven't given up on me. Nobody's given yeah. up. And you know, it, it probably did look a little, um, cloudy there for a minute for your girl but things are good things are going good staying busy not just with training also with some other cool gigs one of those gigs is january 21st submission only series nine it is an elite grappling series and this one is the pro team duels it's going to be in rosewell studios in la so if you guys are in oc or la come check it out what's going down is uh teams are competing it's a three-man team and the winner gets the winning team gets three thousand dollars and they're also doing a couple female super fights black belts so uh check them out submission only series.com for tickets or if you want to follow them on social media at submission only series and i will be hosting with my girl zeta zang so come check that out it's super fun it's like in a 
it's like an artsy content type studio. So it's not that average kind of grungy, you know, gym vibe. It's it's kind of nice. So you can dress up. There's an like open bar. Uh, check that out, guys. And then the following weekend, um, January 28th, Up Next Fighting number four. If you guys haven't been tuning in, then you don't know. I am now working with a fight organization called Up Next Fighting here in Orange County. Or Uh, SoCal, pretty much. And um, I'm so happy. It's a really, really great promotion. And I'll tell you why. Not just because I work for them and they're paying me, but because they really care about their fighters. And here's another thing that they're doing that's kind of special. This next event on January 28th is a collaboration event. So they're working with a nonprofit and it's a PSA who Actually, Danny Trejo is headlining, but it's called Bad Meds Kill Real People uh, or hashtag Stop Bad Meds. Basically, it's bringing awareness to the fact that online pharmaceutical drugs are fucked, guys. You need to not trust what you hear on the Internet or what you read on the Internet. You need to verify your medications before you put them in your body. And who better to talk about this than me? You know, it's anyone can do it. Anyone can get caught up and um, don't be so trusting. So it's www safe.pharmacy.com wish I would have checked you know wouldn't be uh, in trouble like I am sometimes but uh, please learn from my mistakes not just with supplements but lots of other medications asthma medication it, all over across the board any kind of online uh, prescription that you're getting www.safe.pharmacy.com. And so January 28th, Up Next Fighting is actually doing a collab event. So if you go to this event, tickets are on sale now, upnextfighting.com or on their social media at Up Next Fighting on Instagram. And you'll see it. You know, I don't know if Danny Trejo is going to be there. That'd be super sweet. But um, we're basically going to, you know, put on a show that's uh, got purpose behind it. And I think that says a lot about the organization, a lot about the people that run the organization. And uh, it's going to be a great event. So come check it out, guys. Other than that, I'm just trying to get in shape and, um, you know, just get ready for these stem cells because I will not be able to train as much. So I'm trying to get super jacked and in shape so that um, when I'm resting, I don't feel like I'm wasting time. But Yeah, that's it, guys. I'm really excited about our guest. A couple reminders. You're probably tired of hearing it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Please support us by checking out our website and buying some merch if you can. Sex Violence with RebelGirl.com. Not sex and violence. The website is Sex violence with rebelgirl.com and if you want to support me as well you can check out my exclusive content site it's like only fans but better it's called fan time and that website is ashleyrebelgirl.com if you want to email us with any questions or guest suggestions if you want to sponsor the show um, tell me a funny story that you think would be fun to share or you know you can be anonymous that you know i always like um telling some stories that are um, from you guys, even if you just want to be anonymous. I promise not to tell your name. So uh, check that out or email us at sexandviolencepodcast, uh, sexandviolencepodcast at gmail.com. Okay, guys, let's talk to our guest. Today's guest is an American mixed martial artist in the featherweight division. He's competed for the Ultimate Fighting Championship, LFA, Up Next Fighting, and most recently, BYB Extreme Bare Knuckle Fighting. He also competed for Classic Entertainment and Sports and is a former CES MMA Bantamweight champion. The Riverside, California native holds a record of 18 and 10 and has been pro since 2015. We talk about Sex in an Uber, Russian Mob Movie, Power Ranger Put Down, Now On Stage, Daddy Long Legs, The Awkwardness Spiral, Slapping the Kinky Out of Someone, ADHD and OCD in a crazy world, threesome dreams, tag team foot job tales, stripper in another life, naked escape mid stroke, walking it on a porn set on accident, and much more. Here is your guest, Andre Afro Monkey Yule.
here with Andre Afro Monkey. I am so excited to have you on. You're always bringing the good energy. Thank you so much. How's your day going so far? So far, I'm not, me being like really frank on the situation, it was kind of like rough day. It started raining really hard and yeah. trying to get everything together. And then, you know, you don't know how the service is going to work. So it was like one of those random moments. And then I ended up like smoking for, you know, a little mindset. And now I'm like excellently really chill. That's great. Ah, oh, God. I always, I always try to smoke a little bit of weed before the podcast because even if it's someone like you who I feel very comfortable with, we've, you know, talked in person, I've interviewed you for Up Next Fighting, it's still, you know, I want to do good. And so I smoke a little bit, but I never, like, I always smoke too much, uh, you know, and that's obviously the kind of personality I have. I'm like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do a lot of it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm with that. And actually, I prefer like energy like that being around because it's, uh, I end up doing the same. And especially if I'm like smoking like out of a bong or something, I don't know how to do the whole technique right or however they do it. And it'd be like the first one while like dying in the inside of the back of my throat. And I'm like, all right, I quit today. I'm like, oh, you're one hitter. I am. I am. I'm happy with that. <laughs> well, I'm glad that your day perked up. Hopefully this interview is very fun for you. It's it's a fun interview. It's different. I'm definitely going to ask you, you know, the same questions about fighting, but we're going to get in the good stuff a little bit later. So uh, you ready to jump right into it? That I am. I'm okay. Ready. Let's well, make it happen. You know, everyone knows you as an exciting fighter and you fought in all these different organizations, UFC, LFA. I was looking up your uh, Wikipedia and your roster, I mean, your record and all that. But you just did bare knuckle boxing. So I want to know, is that the switch? You know, where do you want to go from here? You want to continue bare knuckle boxing? Or are you trying to work your way back to MMA? Uh Well, the good thing is about the whole bare knuckle that I did, they left it open where I'm able to do anything I want long as I end up finished like their side of the contract type of deal. And the whole bare knuckle thing, it's just like a little drill and a rush if I end up saying anything. Cause like growing up, I did a lot of street fights. It was like life. When I say life, it was life. And especially when you moved around a lot. And so uh, for me to end up dropping into that, it was just to revamp my whole lifestyle and mindset and the inner me type of deal. So truth be told, I actually want to do, or actually you know, I'm gonna finish the fight, but if they end up giving me the money that I got, like I want and I'm asking for, then, you know, it could be one of those like lifetime um, career type things. But uh goal is, is to get back in the whole USC and everything and like kind of make it happen. Cause that's the biggest platform. And right now, but at the same time, like I said, if I build bare knuckle with my hands, I, you know, it's like star fandom and me being like, like one of those like starstruck exciting fighters, I can make that happen. So everything is kind of like whatever they place in front of me. Yeah, I mean, I see bare knuckle as, you know, uh, an opportunity to grow your grow your stock even more, right? Yeah. But then, That's obviously, cool. I gotta ask, like, what happens if you hurt your hands? That's your money makers. You know, like, that's why I'm, everyone's like, oh, Ashley, you're going to get into bare knuckle? I'm like, no, I like my face and I like my <laughs> hands and I like not being fucked up. Like, I'm already fucked up with my spine. Like, so what happens if you do injure your hands and then, boom, you know, UFC or Bellator, someone else calls? Well, funny thing about that is, like, basically, I already have a messed up left hand. And this is the, my money maker, the one that I'm like dropping people or rocking people or what I'm basically known for. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, he has that great one, two. You know, he has that two. So I already broke this bad boy, and it's still partially broke. I can't even ball a full fist with it. But, you know, I throw it like I want to end up breaking someone's face anyways, you know. <laughs> so be doing it with a little padding, which, no, the padding is not for me. And, or, you know, it's not for them. It's for myself type of deal. But yeah. it's one of those things, like, once you're used to it or your hand is just there, I'm already prepared for it to break. So... Everything that I end up doing, I'm prepared to break the hand and call it a day, you know. So I know like a lot of people say, what about your knuckles? What about your hands and your wrists? But we are automatically in the game or the fighting sport that we are in. It's one of those, you know, flip a coin. It might land on heads and that's you breaking your hand or, hey, it might land on tails and you're good to go, you know. But that's just like how I end up like rolling with it because I'm like more of that guy that just jumps all in because it's, you know, it's like 50, you know, that 50, 50 moment of yes or no, I'm on the yes or no moment. So if I'm in, I'm in. So yeah. That's yeah. I understand. And you know, that's just the sport that we, that we're a part of, right? There's a lot of risks and it's a high risk, high reward sport. So you got to put, uh, what's it called? Bacon on the table somehow, you know, bare knuckle. Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you know, do you have a, a next bare knuckle fight set up or are you just waiting for the call? Uh, waiting for the call for that part. Um, 
they have one like they frisked it all the way like up in like probably March or April or something. But the thing about it is like I'm the active type person, so I'm like trying to fight now. And if I can fight tomorrow, I would. So it's like one of those if that call happens, it's happening, you know. But uh, so yeah, that's that's until then. And right now, I'm just kind of fishing around, and you know, some of the teammates are, are all getting ready for fights, and so I'm like helping them, you know. I love that. How was your experience with Up Next fighting? Oh, I freaking love that up next. Uh, they came like a family, and it was like the first day at like face to face and everything. And it was like I already felt so comfortable of, hey, we're already friends, you know. And it made me comfortable, so that was like the whole goal. And then at the at a bonus, they had you, so like, hell yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, so yeah, you know, it, it's one of those things, and it's like the whole up next is like that big platform, like uh, like you said, it's building up the stock, and they're actually trying to do it that way. Cause I, I end up talking to a few people uh, back there and one of them approached it up with yeah you know we're giving out like the the raising uh type vibe or uh, back in the day uh you know where they line everybody up before uh, oh they yeah 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 them, like, everybody kind of and that was my first time in that like situation or that type and i was like oh i actually like it and at the same time it introduces us to the fans and fans get to know us a bit granted as in they only know in the name but they get the visual of okay I'm going to pick him. I don't care who he fights. I'm going to pick him type of a deal, you know? It and is then next fun. You know it, oh, yeah, you remember that guy that was standing right here, you know? Stuff like that. But I love Up Next. I definitely would love to jump back on it uh, on the card. I'm probably going to try to make their uh, January card, you know? Uh, it should be a week after my birthday. So oh. I'm going to fun by going there. Yeah, that's January 28th, actually. That's that's like in three weeks. Yeah. It's You're trying to get on that it. card? If they slide me on that you card, love I love fighting. Yeah. You're like fight, 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 fight. I tell you, have me on there. It's like I promise you, it's like I actually had to turn down like a long contract. It was a contract in uh, uh, let me see, end of March, and I was like, that's cool, I'll take it. But the problem is, I need to know if I'm able to fight this month in February. And I was mm-hmm. like, if I can do that, then I'll like I'll jump on it. But if not, then I was like, hey, I'm gonna kind of put that on time, and I'm just gonna knock this out. And if it's still open, then I'll jump on it. But I, you know, it's like, I want to know if I'm able to fight today slash tomorrow or, you know, like it comes down to that whole negotiation and things and stuff like that. It sounds like you just don't want to be restricted. You just want to fight, fight, fight and get the work in when you can. That is that part, especially like I said, uh, my goal is to have seven fights this year. It's like, you know, seven straight, straight seven, seven. seven. Wait, what, yeah. what What? what is the record? It's like Cowboy Cerrone or Angela Hill. Like I, they fought like a certain amount of times in a year. And I think it was like Angela Hill. one of I them. Angela yeah, because Angela Hill, she always fight. Do you know that record, Zol? Angela Hill or Cowboy Cerrone, like most UFC fights in a year. We need a little Google. <laughs> like, but I know, yeah. um, uh, I think Holland ended up catching or getting like six. Six. In one year. Okay. But... But to me, that ain't nothing. And, you know, he could take that as a diss, but Ooh, it ain't okay. it's me, it's like, <laughs> You know, like one of my like one of my fights in my career, like I ended up, uh, before I ended up, uh, before I got to the UFC, I ended up fighting seven times in one year. So it's like I'm already used to it. So it was one of those back-to-backs, all right, hey, we got to fight next week. All right, let me go. And the best fight, I promise you, I had, it was the LFA fight, right? Um, I ended up fighting, uh, which is a homeboy now, it was Gustavo. Lopez. I ended up fighting him in January, right? I broke my hand. And when I say I broke it, like it was uh, the pinky fracture, you know, they say the little minor fracture or whatever they call it. That, shit, that mess was like lumped out. And then I broke my thumb slash like into the wrist. It was broken. Okay. Yeah. So I was supposed to go to the doctors. They gave me the list. Yeah, go to the doctors. I'm like, all right, all right, all right, I'm going to do that. Never went to the doctor. I go to Vegas. As soon as I get done with the fight, I shoot to Vegas, you know, like the whole thing. And I ended up getting a uh opportunity like hey you know the fight for lfa it's in three weeks do you want to um take it i look at my hand and i look at my uh my brother and cousin because they with me right mm-hmm. i look at them and i said hey um what's your thoughts if, if i say I, i'm gonna take this fight and they were like dude your hand's broken da, 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 da. And i was like okay so i looked back down i looked at the fight or i looked at the opponent and i was like i could beat him with one hand wow <laughs> <laughs> So I literally vir- like virtually say this. They over here are like, no, nah, your hand's broken. All right, let me look at the um the fight. They look at it and they are like, okay, we'll take it. Just like that. It was like that moment. And then I'm calling them up like, hey, da da da. And they're like, all right, we gotta get your hand clear. It was like, luckily I knew a doctor. And oh. so I walked in and I was like, so my bad. It's not the fact that I knew a doctor. I knew uh, a doctor that could um, clear me. And at the same time, I knew somebody or the doctor that ended up signing off on my hand. 
uh, he didn't put no hand. So I just walked into the uh, the docks with my right hand saying, yeah, I broke my right. Or they're saying I broke my right hand, but my hand is good. So I showed you them. Sneaky, you sneaky. You <laughs> sneaky. Andre. Hey, this is for your own well-being. Yeah. Okay. Uh, public service announcement. Guys or lady Don't fighters, me. girl fighters, do not do this. This is not smart. Okay. Continue your story, Andre. <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, so full fact, I wasn't supposed to do it, but I went in and I was like, yeah, they were like, they wanted me to check my right hand because it was like swollen like three days ago. And, you know, he looks at it and he was like, oh, okay. And then he looks at the, like, but this doc, he kind of got, he kind of caught me on it. And he was like, all right, let me see the other hand. So I showed it to him and it was like, luckily I got bit down where I was able to ball it. Yeah. So, um, so when I did it, he said, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. You, you know, you cleared the whole nine, but the left hand was like super swollen, but it was like, yeah, you know, I'm only here for my right hand, you know, da da da. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Dude. Then literally three weeks later, I go in the fight first round, you know, and it was like one of those things. And I literally did it with one hand. Like you end up seeing me use my left hand. You won the fight? Oh yeah. It was first round. Uh, wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. Like you end up seeing me slap the guy, <sighs> you know, with the right hand, right? I'm like, pop, <laughs> slap, pop, slap, pop, slap. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's amazing. That's an amazing story. Wow. And it, it reminds me of that meme that's really popular. It's like half of the uh, page is the basketball players where they're like, basketball players pretend they're hurt. And then the other half yeah. is like an MMA fighter. It's like MMA fighters pretend they're not hurt. And I'm like, this is the perfect example. <laughs> No, that literally is. And I know it's one you're talking about, too, because they'd had one for uh, LeBron mm -hmm. James. And it was like he matched him with the it went from MMA fighters to football players to uh, um, basketball players. And then it had LeBron <laughs> in the soccer field with the soccer players. Right. And which one? I love soccer. Soccer is like um, maybe my favorite source. I really want my boy to um, play soccer, you know, but maybe like flopping sometimes. Like, yeah. Really, yeah. Right? Yeah. And they had LeBron out there on the soccer field. flopping. With <laughs> It was funny. It was funny. Uh, so. Yeah, they're uh, soccer players and basketball players. You guys be dramatic as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's about my chest. <laughs> you know? Well, that's pretty much all the fight talk we're gonna get into right now. It sounds like you just looking to fight whoever, whenever you want to stay hungry. And it sounds like you're relatively healthy right now. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Awesome. Even if I wasn't, I am great. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna fake it till we make it. That's for sure. Really, <laughs> gotta get back there. So, so what's going on with you in the love life right now? I, I always ask right out the gate. Um, how do you identify sexually? Meaning, uh, straight, bi, uh, gay, asexual, pansexual, and then also, what is your current dating status? Okay, so from back to the back. Yeah. So dating status, I am in a relationship. Um, All right. Name Sarah. She's awesome. Right. Um, now going back, I'm straight, but I also stay in my lane. So that's just like, you know, and when I say stay in my lane, I have no beef with anybody. Everybody does their own thing. I'm happy for everybody. Everybody that ends up finding love. Hey, that's fucking, or that's beautiful. Granted that you probably gonna hear me curse a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you know, that, uh, I want everybody to end up loving who they want to love. Like, you know, everybody, it's kind of hard and no one can end up understanding what you go through. They can only basically feel or whatever the direction they want to throw. But yeah, so straight and, um. Now, what was the first question again? Just, yeah, no, just straight and in a relationship, just to kind of get, you know, uh, established here. Yeah, I mean, that's what this show is all about, Andre. I think you can tell. Like, I'm just like, hey, everybody accept everybody for who the fuck they are. You don't like it. You don't got to talk to them. You don't got to be friends. Unfollow, block, whatever. It doesn't matter. No no hate. You know, our our funnest thing to say on the show is we don't yuck anyone's yum. You, you think that's yummy? You do you. You eat that. You know, <laughs> like, we'll eat what we no, want to eat. <laughs> That is true, because like one of my main weaknesses in this world is Brussels sprouts, and people be trying to like convince me and say, "Hey, Brussels sprouts is good, especially if you tried it with bacon." I try it with everything. I don't like Brussels sprouts. It's my weakness. <laughs> my kryptonite, you know. I feel like it's like aliens walked around and said, "Hey, we're gonna end up taking shits right here." And it's good. <laughs> Brussels sprouts. You feel me? Wow, like, you're not real, real passionate about Brussels sprouts. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> Full on weakness. And I got three. And that's one of them. That's number one. <laughs> so, you know, right into like the kind of romance talk. What do you usually look for in a partner? I love asking first on the physical aspects and then like characteristics. You know, do you look for certain personality traits and uh, certain physical traits? Um, well, clearly they say uh, my uh, the physical traits is like all like linked into I have a type. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love that because yeah. a lot of people say they don't have a type. Oh, I don't have a type. I don't. And if you don't have a type, that's great. But if you know you have a type, you you know your type. 
And it was that part right now. Cause like at first I was like, no, I don't have a type. I was literally that, 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 that person, right? It's like, no, I have a type. I'll end up dating. Cause like literally if all my past, I have dated every race. Like, you know, I got to every race. Uh, and it got to this moment where you just start, I don't know, it seems like everything just starts like basically like slimming or coming to a center of what you actually attracted to or what, whatever the direction. Yeah. And it's the, you know, this the uh, Pacific or Islander type or deal or exotic. My back, let's go ahead. It's the exotic look. Like, yeah. you know, it's just the exotic look. It could be like, hey, we had tattoos here or hey, it's just the long hair that just um, like flops and flows, you know, little things like that. And like the lady I'm dating, like, you know, she fits the whole scripture of what I'm oh, looking at. I've seen her. Oh. She's hot. <laughs> hey, look, she's hot. Look. <laughs> I'll be yeah, stalking. Like, I'll be stalking. I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. I like it. I like hey. it. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm on. And it's like, and I know she probably like think it's like game, you know, whatever the case. Granted, which one is like uh, the personality parts that like the traits that I like. I like the whole aggressive of I know what I want. And she started off with I know what I wanted. Like, hey, it was like, hey, I, I was like, I kind of want to get to know you. Know, she hits me with, yeah, but first off, you know, let me just let you know, I've ever the only one that you are one of the only girls that you're talking to like she kind of like left it open but not left it open like i just don't want 90 girls and i'm part of that 90 girls like you know like you better slim it down to three to me. <laughs> i am all three type of two yeah. so like that's how she kind of came at me and i was like i looked at it and i said i like that it was just like that it's like i like that and then actually know it she was grabbing my attention so i'm like flowing into it and it was all cool and next you know it we start dating but it's like so up on that it's like she the exotic type or energy with that whole I know what I want if I want you I'm going for it granted if you have somebody else or not because I always sit there and state this people always take somebody from somebody no matter how you look at take it some, the people always take somebody from somebody from somebody so meaning like hmm. you got a single person granted they're supposed to be single but 9 times 10 there's a good friend best friend or a guy that's really into you and they really want to talk to you but you're not giving them that, that chance because it's like ah, I know you for so long and I know your like characters or whatever the case is we just don't fit. Mm-hmm. And then someone else pops up and you only know them for like three days or a week or whatever the case is to build that chemistry. Then you slide over. You just took, you know, that person just took you from the person that really wanted you and was trying and thought they were on something. You know? Okay. That's one way. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You know? You're right. And then it's like, you end up digging, you end up like knowing what I'm talking Like, you know, like you start like spreading it and you'd be like, okay, that is true. Cause it's like somebody's getting taken and her mindset was, I don't care if you was talking to somebody, you better dim it down to three and I better be all three. <laughs> like, all right. You, yeah, you are number, you're all three of them, you know? So like I said, it's like the energy and that's like a turn on, like, you know, and especially like how it is. It's like, I am like one of those like type of freaks type of ordeal, you know, like I end up shooting for, for the stars and moons and stuff like that. You got to, you got to. I love that. So it sounds like you like, you know, the exotic look, but also like a confident, assertive woman. Yeah. Like a powerful woman. Sounds like a powerful woman. Powerful woman. That's like a straight um, turn on. Like, I you know, love like, it. Hey. God damn. I, it is the worst <laughs> when men are intimidated or not even intimidated, but they're just like, oh, like, I don't want. They'll, they'll call them like bossy, like a bossy chick yeah. or like, a, you know, or a bitchy chick. It's like, it's OK to be assertive and know what you want. And a lot of men find that unattractive. But it's nice when a man likes that in a woman. All right. What about what about deal breakers? And I, I, you and I talk. I know you have a two year old uh, son. What's your son's name? My boy's June. J- June, like the month. Yep, June, like the month. Granny's oh. not born in June, but <laughs> June it, it just fit, and it was like freaking perfect. And you know he's an April baby, so uh, I love know, it. So, yeah, I love. I have a cousin named April. She was born on April first. See, now that's points. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I always like, you know, for example, a deal breaker for me, just because I don't want kids and I'm not like this motherly person. So like, you know, before I was with my partner, it was like, all right, my deal breaker is kids and my deal breaker is uh, cigarette smoke. Like, do you have any deal breakers like that? Oh, yeah. Uh, mine's oh, yeah. Probably, yeah. I was like, yeah, it's like, mine's like probably like the most awkwardest damn things in the world. So don't, y'all don't judge me. Don't judge me. No judgment here. No judgment right. zone. <laughs> So like a deal breaker for me and it's like unless i'm like locked in like you know we're locked in and i'm like i'm in there and it's like all right whatever but granted it's one of those things like i'll start making my adjustments but and when i say adjustments it's like this uh so everybody that has like you know like the back of pants like you know they have the line right of the pants like you pull it up and it's mm-hmm. like in the back of the butt type of ordeal and it's like it's like the neat. new oh you're talking about the new style of spandex that like go right up your booty crack yeah, it, it could be that or regular jeans. We'll just sit there and say it's just it has to be even. 
So it's like you oh. got the, the line ha- or like the pants have to be even where it, the the line that's like between like, you know, like the big splits and stuff has to match with, with the ass. It has to go in the middle. Wait a second. So, so are you saying that like some women have one butt cheek bigger than the other? And I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm so confused that. right now. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can grab. So it's like. You're getting a diagram? What's going on right now? I'm about to pull a diagram. All right. So I'm going to do this right here. So argument's sake, this is like the back of the line of, of the. Uh, of the pants, right? Okay. You got the butt cheek, the butt cheek, and then there's the line where it's it goes down, like basically the seam of the pants. There you go. There got you go. It. There you go. So it's one of those where if the pants is crooked, right? And I'm talking about the line is on the right side of the cheek or the far left side of the cheek or just awkwardly there. <laughs> it's a turn off to me because it's like I don't know what it is. It might just be like past like mindset, like hey, all right, you're not like you're not like functioning, right? <laughs> or you know, you're just not like, you know, it's like, what's the best word? Uh, the, you're not organized in life at this moment, or whatever the case is. <laughs> and then, you know, it might not got nothing to do with anything. And then it's just like, hey, you know, hey, I, I'm just not back there and I can't see the line. <laughs> yeah. You know, match between my butt cheeks and everything, but that's a turn off. So I'll literally, like if I'm deep in, I'm fixing it. Like, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sit there okay, it got it. For them. So that'd be like me saying my, I'll make my adjustments. I like adjust the pants just to make me. It's like I'm maybe like awkward. Like if I can't pick up something or like uh, I have an OCD with when it comes to like if I touch like something dirty and I know I can't wash my hands and if I can't do it I won't try to touch it and if I don't like my hands getting ready to fall off and melt and I feel oh like wow it's like burning, that's like a that. that's a, okay so that's an OCD thing that you have if you can't wash yeah. your hands you feel like you can't touch anything else can't touch anything so you literally. Like, so this is what I mean when I'm like, when I say I'm awkward, I'm like awkward to a moment where if something else awkwardly happens, I am awkward-er. So it's, it's an awkward situation. It's an awkward it's spiral. Like, it's, it's, it's all awkward. So I'll literally be like this and my hand is burning. Like, you know, like, hey. You're you're <laughs> like Rick, Ricky Bobby when he does interviews. He's like, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do with my hands. No, I'll put your hands down. I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> okay. Like, I, this is so bad to the moment. Like, I can't even like, and it's like, awkward of again so it's like i don't know what to do with my hands like me i don't know how to take pictures so you gotta do, tell me something love what we do in my hand do randomly hear me what should i do with my hands like you know i literally like verbally ask the question what should i do with my hands and someone would be like oh just keep them to your side or oh do the fist and everything so i'd be doing this the whole time <laughs> so if you like i promise you it'd be like nine pictures of me just doing this different with my hands. Yeah, different poses, and I'm yeah. like, you guys ain't telling you, you know, you're not talking to me. So it's like I make things awkward. So that line is like a turnoff because it's like, <laughs> fuck, I'm over thinking about it, and I can't do nothing. It's like we're not, you know, it's like that beginning stage of, are we in a relationship or not? Because if we are, I got to fix your pants, and if not, then it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, like, you know? I get it, yeah. I get it. So, so that's like the deal breaker for me. I feel like it's awkward, I know, but it's one of those. How, how is dealing with your OCD in a relationship? Because when you have your own quirks, right? Like, because that's all their fuck, you know, their quirks, whatever. It's not like, oh my God, I have OCD about washing. It's not a big deal. But when you're in a relationship, you know, I always like, I'm concerned because I've got my, like, I snore, my poor boyfriend, you know, I'm like, oh God, <laughs> like, what's it like uh, having the OCD on that level where you feel so awkward and then with your partner? Is that hard to navigate? It definitely is hard to navigate because, you know, it's like not only that I have my own CD, it's like, you know, uh, your partner might have one, you know, like I can end up branching off like like a few of the exes type of deal. I do it and they'll get pissed off and it'd be like one of those days like I get it. I'm sorry. And I'm like apologizing to it. It's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just it's fucking with me, you know. Yeah. And it's like they get, you know, they get annoyed, especially if they're like not in the mood or they're angry about it or whatever the case or if they just pissed off in their day. You know, and it's like, all right, I'll just make it up and like buy you ice cream or something. Like that. Like, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll try to do something where it's like, all right, I messed up and I'm sorry the OCD kicked in, but yeah. it can it can be a deal breaker to the moment where the deal breaker is not might not be for me, it might be for them. Like, yeah. hey, you a little habit, so I gotta leave them. Like, you know, and then they're not gonna tell you that because you know, like, picture you walk around like that's like the nightmare of of oh, you know, yeah, she left me because. I fixed your pants. Dude, that's such a small thing. If someone's leaving because of that, then they weren't really, you know, in it to win it. They weren't, you know, like that's, that's silly. You said you um, are quick to give the ice cream. Is that your love language, gift giving? Actually, that comes, that's just last for me. I don't know why. (laughs) That's the word, the last case scenario. Here's some ice cream. (laughs) (laughs) You know, um, no, my love language is definitely, um, it's uh, communication is number one. And then it's, um, 
uh, touch. And okay, not, so uh, touch. words of affirmation? Words of affirmation. There yeah, okay. That's yeah. Those are my two as well. I always say, rub my butt and tell me I'm pretty and I will be happy. <laughs> you know? Okay. <laughs> Physical touch I'll wait I'll wait and you. words of affirmation. So that's yeah, awesome. so, yeah, so like It's like, and it's perfect if you find someone else like like very similar, like uh, uh, the lady I'm dating right now. She is similar. It's rub my butt and then, you know, tell me that I'm pretty. Yep, and, it's yep. like that. and I'm the opposite. Like, hey, tell me I'm awesome. And then, I'll you know, and just know I'm going to touch your butt while I'm telling you. you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, like I said, it's like that's the part where it ends up like becoming like energy, perfect um, matching or giving or taking, you know, because like I said, she wants to hear the words and, and the feel. And it's like, I want it. I want the feel to the touch, like, you know, so it's like, as long as I know what I'm touching now, that touch is always going to be something that I can't let go or constantly keep doing it, you know? Isn't it crazy how, you know, we're both in our 30s now. It's like, these are things that we think about when it comes to the relationship that I know 25 instead of 35 year old Ashley no fucking way was I thinking this deep about the relationship or how to be connected to my partner and so my question to you is uh, besides just using our brain more but how do you think you've changed dating wise and love and relationship wise or even sex wise uh, from your 20s to your 30s well definitely we'll end up saying like the mindset of where we like all was centered of having a type Cause like at 25 to 24, I wouldn't date anybody, you know? And like the, at the time I was dating, uh, uh, my first son's, uh, mother and that was my relationship type of deal, you know, cause I'm a relationship type. Cause like I stated, it's like, I need all the time. I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm you know, I'm not going to lie. It's like, I'm like the you, needy type. Like, you want the love and attention and affection. No. Oh yeah. All that. I need all it all. That. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, I didn't want to, I was never good at like, you know, spreading things like, all right, I'm gonna give you love. I'm gonna give you love. And you're gonna give me love and you're gonna give me love. I was never good at that. Cause it's, it's exhausting. Like, right. It is. Like, <laughs> people don't really get that. And it's like, and I'm, especially when you're like in the fighting career or where we at. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you already know majority of your time has to be in that gym, yep. you know? Yep. And it, and then the relationship side, it's like it's supposed to be like that support system of the ad of hey. It's the you, decompress. Hey. It's the yin yang, right? Yeah. yeah, it's that full yin yang, you know. And now imagine if you're dating multiple people, it's your energy is getting separated, and especially when every one of them gets mad. Like you know, <sighs> you're mad, you're mad, and it's like you're mad because your dude you're dating is doing this, and then you know you're mad because the girl you were dating on the side is doing that, and then it's like. Now you're taking it all on me and I have no energy for it because I just got done leaving the gym. Like, exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> so, you could say like one, we'll just say one partner is enough potential friction, let alone multiple, because you just never know, you know, the people, yeah. two humans together trying to make it work, especially if you live together. Goddamn, living together is hard, right? Yeah, like, it is. It is. And then you got kids. I'm like, oh, kids too? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So you're you a know. one woman kind of guy. That's what I hear. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I am, a one one woman kind of guy, you know. Uh, don't get me wrong, when I was single uh, or in my 20s, the difference of now and then, then it was, all right, I'm going to go to the next one, next one, like, you know, whatever, whoever locks me. It's kind of like I'm that that value coin of who wants that, that, matter of fact, we'll sit there and say that little prize, like who really wants the prize. And then you get it and then it's like, all right, I'm here and, you know, I see something better, so I'm going to go over there. And it's like, all right, you get it, move yeah. on, you know. But yeah. now, like the mindset of how I end up moving with things is kind of like, all right, I lost that. I'll just kind of like cruise. And my cruising will be like, jump into one of my hobbies. I'm like, I love snowboarding. So it's like, I'm snowboarding, especially, you know, the whole winter or if I have to travel, I'll travel to it. So I, and even though I just picked that up like last year, but that was my time um, spent or it was tennis. Like, it'd be like random moments of that. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I started like, all right, I'm gonna start settling or trying to look for something because, you know, me being broken up and then time speeds up and it's like, all right, you start to miss what you, you actually need in your life. And it's like that little small things. And like I said, look, I came across uh, Sarah and she ended up like making things click. And especially when I'm around her, it's like, I'm able to be myself at the end of the day with that one person, you get to be yourself. Like, you know, it's, it's this freaky, freaky time. Hey, yeah. Freaky, mm-hmm. freaky time. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> you know? But, um, but the other ones, it's like, all right, you got to call and got to see if they're cool or they're not dating. And, you know, because like I said, I've been like stuck in a lot of awkward situations to the moment where from then and now, like then I would ask the women who they're dating or are you dating somebody? Is there somebody else? Uh-huh. But now I don't even ask. Like right now. What, do you, what do you mean an awkward situation? Like awkward situation of like uh, argument's sake. Did she, or not, 
not this year, the beginning of last year, um, I was talking to somebody that was married. I didn't know she was married. Oh, Our, son of a- My bad, my bad. <laughs> my bad, my bad. <laughs> I knew she was married. She told me she was getting a divorce. Okay, They're in the middle okay. of the paperwork and stuff like that. All right. So it just like engaged as an, oh, okay, I can go ahead and talk to you. Chop mm-hmm. it up. So we chop it. You know, we're like, we're talking, um, you know, all types of random stuff going on. Uh, but it was one of those moments where she ended up like arguing with me, right? And it was like, you liking all these girls' pictures uh, half butt naked, right? And I'm You're like, like, it's right in front of me. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like that. you know. But like, here's the other side on, on the situation. It's like, you're saying this to me, but you're still married, which you're supposed to bing, get this paperwork stuff going on, but you never did. And at the same time, you're liking guys that are inside the gym with their shirts off and stuff like that. And then some of those people, it's like, I'm, I was cool with, I'm cool with. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you're liking it. So it's like, ain't no hiding the, the funk but you're getting mad at me because of this. And they'll say, well, it's different because you're a blue check guy. What does that mean? Like, wow. <laughs> you know, well, that's what that's like, what they say? You're mean? a blue check guy? Oh yeah. Yeah. You're a blue check guy. And then it's like, oh, okay. So by me liking somebody, it's different from you liking this person over here. And it's like, so what, what, okay. I'm a blue check girl. So what, what's the difference? Are we not allowed to do certain things because we have a fucking verification? You know what I'm That's, that's the argument. <laughs> so I bring that up. Well, it's not different. And it's like, well, you knew you talked to me when I was married. And I was like, okay. Wow. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my thing. <laughs> so guess what? The whole thing was I just started the argument with you because I'm getting back with my guy. And I had to figure out a reason to get rid of you without just simply saying, hey, I'm going to get back with my guy. Oh, like, wow. Like, so oh, she, okay, yeah. do your thing. So she was just picking something for that. And then there you go. So those are the awkward situations where I don't ask. Like, you know, I could have dig, I could have probably cut everything um, like from the gate of, all right, I'll wait until you get your divorce, but I just don't ask. Yeah. Or somebody is married or in a relationship, I don't ask. I just, like, clearly, you are, if you are in a relationship, it ain't working because you're talking to me. And then clearly, um, even if it was, you know, it's like one of those little situations where as long as I don't know, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I got stories. I got, like, freaking stories. Well, <laughs> what, what's, what, was something, what would something be that uh, you could tell your younger self that you wish, you know, you knew back then? Uh, from now, from then, as far as dating goes, if anything, I probably would have had the mindset of still or switch the factors and don't ask because like when you ask, you end up knowing certain things and by you knowing it kind of like dictates of how you're moving in the process or moving forward, you know, and it will be like random, like stuff like, are you sick if I do? Uh, so another random story. So, uh, this story was. Like, I literally made a post about it. I did, like, a story where I was, like, eating Del Taco, and the guy, like, walked in, right? And it was, like, who? And I'm, like, oh, who's this guy? Who's this guy? And it was, like, well, I'm the husband. And it's, like, oh, snaps. I should have um, not, not like, asked because she would have ended up lying. And now it's, like, if I would have known she was married or at the time, I would have ended up doing what? Like, either still messing with her. And if I did, now I have this, like, dark conscience in the back of my head, like, oh, man, you're messing with somebody's wife. But now it's going to make me not feel safe when i'm like dating my girl because she might be married me messing with this dude and it's like <laughs> it's a circle so i'm like thinking about it and then it's like this is that time where i was like i feel a little bit better because i'm literally as they were arguing and i'm like eating my taco or taco <laughs> you know and they're just going out it's drinking my uh, lemonade from you know del taco i'm eating it and the guy was bumping heads with her and they're like this and that and then it kind of like drifted into me like are you ready to fight and then it's like bro you don't want that like you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you ain't safe for it you know <laughs> like i didn't know i'm just gonna eat my food and i'm gonna leave like you know yeah it's like clearly i could have just left but it was like one of those you know I'm, I'm i'm deep into the taco so i was like that so it was like that little situation where, so did you fight in taco bell or what <laughs> oh, oh no oh no this is at the house that it didn't end up in a fight but it kind of got close to it to the moment of she was like barking like no, you know, he's nobody. He's just a friend. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then it got to that moment. And then it's like it somehow vibrated where she started arguing with me. And I'm like, hold on. That's your dude. I'm a roll. <laughs> yeah. You know, like y'all fix that. And they ended up like finally divorcing. But it was that mindset of I actually had a clear conscience with the situation where I didn't just beat the person up. Yeah. Now, me knowing it. I probably would have beat the guy up because it would have been like, all right, we're in a sticky situation. I know about you. And just the fact is I do know about you. I don't know if you know about me, so we might have to fight now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm the- like normally the guy that swings first before things go up going bananas. Yeah. 
that's and that that wisdom comes with age and experience and yeah. So it sounds like you have some crazy dating stories. Have you ever done online dating? That I did. Now, so <laughs> I ended up telling this story to uh, to Nick, right? <clears throat> and he was like, "Hey, you got to got definitely have to end up shooting this story." So, so this is a uh, online dating, and I ended up uh, getting with the Russian. All right, Russian girl, so, fresh from Russia, comes out <laughs> here to San Diego, and um, <clears throat> Russian chick, cool, cool, really cool. Didn't understand a lick of. Sh- Nothing. Wait, right? wait. How'd you guys date if you guys didn't speak the same language? Uh, Tinder. I don't know what she was doing. I didn't because from from the t- Tinder site, right? Okay. Uh, like whatever you end up trying to say, you can end up easily like translating or pushing it there. Sometimes she would write in Russian, and it's like, all right, I don't understand, and then she'll write in English. So would so you I'm, translate or would she translate? It would be like her translating my my stuff, and then she did it to me one time, and it's like, oh, I don't even know what that is, and then like she like cut that off. And okay. It's like, okay. Oh, okay. Right. So we're chopping it up and then kind of came out like, hey, you know, you should come out here. And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I had nothing else to do. I'm like, all right, sure. I'm going to shoot out to um, San Diego. So it's an hour drive. So I get there. There, So note, like San Diego is like for all the foreigners. It's like L.A. or San Diego that they go to when it's out here. Right. So San Diego, they have like these like dorms type ordeals for foreigners that just pop up. OK. All right. So I get there. Uh soon as i walk in it's like hey strong strong russian i said oh that's some strong ass russian (laughs) okay we hug out i end up getting introduced to her i'm gonna go quotations of her brother okay right but it could be like one of the like traveling lovers who knows right but but i don't know how they do it out there but over here it was kind of like y'all a little too close but hey it is what it is oh got it okay okay you know like i'm here i don't touch touch my brother like that (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm like that. Yeah, like, all right. So all I'm right. like, all right, whatever the case is, that y'all you end up floating in that direction. I'm like, all right. We ended up taking three shots before we left, okay? Um, and it was like this rushing bottle, and I felt like they might have, like, put a scorpion in there, like, <laughs> which one? It's like a scorpion drink shot. But, yeah, so whatever the case is, strong-ass Russian vodka okay. type right there. Three shots of that. I'm already feeling myself, so I'm basically toasted. I'm lightweight. And when I say lightweight, I'm like lightweight okay. type of deal. So I'm already I'm already feeling it. We get in a, a Uber. This is like Uber time, like the beginning of startup Uber. Or it could have been. Yeah, it was an Uber. So because it, it's an Uber story. So okay. just note that. It's Got an Uber it. story. Okay. All right. So everything else is the buildup of craziness, but it's the Uber story Got for it. me. So, <laughs> so we get into Uber. We get to the club. We get to the club. We take two more shots and this is like all right i'm gone gone so i'm already gone on you know like a like bla- blacked out there. blacked out or yeah i'm knocking on the door okay, we'll okay. Just stay i'm knocking on the door. okay and so i'm already five shots deep in right and these are like big shots of what they're giving me so all right we get there they're used to it because the, like it's water to them i don't know <laughs> what it is it's water to them but i am gone it's to this moment, like, if they would have ended up, like, trafficking my ass, I would have been definitely <laughs> part of the system of, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be lost right now, right? <laughs> so, they, she ends up taking me to this back room, right? Her and um, dude. And they end up taking me to this back room where it ended up, like, going through a kitchen into a secret room. And the secret room, when I walked in. So, have you ever watched uh, Fast and Furious 2 with uh, Tyrese oh, yeah. and... You know, Paul Zoll, Walker. Zoll has. <laughs> okay, so Zoll, tell me this: Do you recall the um, the situation where the big guy was uh, on the table in the club, and they had uh, had him tied up, and there's a rat on the stomach, and he put the bucket on it, and he started yeah, burning the bucket. Oh my okay. god! What the so, fuck? So it's, something it, it, like it, that. I walked into. That. <laughs> you walked into something I like that. I walked into this. I was like, Lily, I walked in. This like other... Wow. Yeah. Dude, extra and more Russians back there. I walk in, so I'm like the only brother in <laughs> this crew, right? So I'm okay. like, hey, I'm drunk. And I'm like, like I, the words ain't coming out. I'm like, so what we doing? Yeah. They <laughs> <laughs> uh, over like, they got this dude on the table like, hey, where's our money? Oh. You know, and it's like strong Russian. And I'm like, oh my gosh, where'd you take me? Right? <laughs> She, all that she whispers me in my ear. So just know that she whispers in my ear. Don't even worry about it. We're just walking by. I said, wow. I said, okay. 
So we walk in. There's an extra secret room. It goes into the bathroom. So I'm in the bathroom now. Next thing you know it, she's on me. Boom, 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 right? Like nothing sexual popping off, but it's like, hey, she's on me. We're kissing the whole night. Making out, yeah. Making the whole thing, right? We pop out to another shot. As soon as we take another shot, I'm over here still tripping on the fact it's like, hey, you know, y'all got a body, a guy back there. <laughs> y'all, y'all beating him up and torturing him for money. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, don't worry about that. You know, easily in my ear again. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, okay, all right. That's after that other shot. So we jump back in the Uber to go back to the place. And as we're in the Uber, the guy that's like the brother, mm-hmm. he's in the front looking back. Right. <laughs> He's looking in the back seat. I'm behind the driver. She's on like in the, the middle center. She jumps on me. So we low key, we start making out to the moment that we're having sex in the back. Oh, back wow. Right? And so her, this, her brother's in the car. Her brother with brother air quotes. <laughs> watching. And like I said, he was giving me eye contact before it started. Oh, my God. So no. He was, <laughs> no. He was like this. And then so as she's right, you know, so she's on top. We're mm-hmm. having sex. Mm-hmm. The driver. I'm like peeking because he's still like looking at me, but the guy's looking at me, but looking at the driver because the driver is trying to look back. So he's looking back and forth. Yeah. And then he's like, hey, hey, hey. Um, strong accent for him, too. So <laughs> I, I probably, I'm like the only um, American in this car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> he's a strong, you know, so he's strong accenting. Hey, hey, hey. So the brother ends up threatening the driver. You drive straight. You look straight and drive. Oh, wow. Drive. Wow. <laughs> He's fucking wi- wing manning his sister right now. This is weird. This is so wing, weird. Wing, when I say power, power move of wingman of the year, <laughs> that man definitely got the, he got the trophy. Wow. He was like, you drive, I'm going to fuck you up. Like, you know, strong Russian accent. I'll pull this car over and I'll beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fuck. He's riding me. He's saying this. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm looking at her. Oh. I'm looking over at the driver because the driver kind of zigzagging. And it's like, it was bad. It was really Damn. bad. So we finally parked or we finally like got out. He gets out the car. I get out the car. We all get out the car. And then he's getting ready to beat up the dude. And I'm like, I'm still drunk. I'm like really drunk to the moment of, I'm like, I don't know if I felt like I might have cheered it on. Or yeah, <laughs> <laughs> beat his ass like you know. I'm like, oh boy, yeah. yeah. He should mind his own business. Come on, one two. Come on, one two. Yeah. Okay. You know? like, yeah, he should mind his own business. You know? so it's like one of those random things. Like, Poor driver. He's just trying to make a buck doing Uber. He's got make a buck. like, oh, hey. Man. And then we ended up getting in the place and like, all right. So now when we got in. I'm like, again, I go to the bathroom this time and like I'm in the bathroom and I'm like, I'm just like basically like back and forth on the wall. She walks in and then we ended up proceeding to do it again. Nice. And this time, like the brother ain't there, but now the roommate that that is also there, she just pops up out of nowhere and starts banging on the door. And I'm like, oh my gosh. It was like randomly mafia straight into sexual stuff and stuff like that. So that was like the most <laughs> Dude, dude, that sounds like a movie. Someone could make that into a movie. Just that scene. (laughs) I'm trying to tell you, and it's like, and I end up telling people when I do tell, you know, like I I speak about it. Um, like it goes to like, no, I don't believe it. And I was like, no, like this is really happening. No, I believe it because fuck, people are crazy. Social media, just just what you did right there, like. We don't speak the same language. We translated. We're perfect strangers. I got into car with her and her brother. You know, like that. I mean, if you put yourself in a situation, like it'll get crazy. And so it's that sounds yeah. like it could be easily true. <laughs> oh yeah, and it was like it was, I promise you, like most wildest like Tinder date of online dating. Like, yeah, you know, that, that wins. That wins the show. Yeah. Uh, the sex and violence uh, with Rebel Girl. <laughs> Never heard a crazier online. So did that turn you off from online dating? No, actually. Uh, no. <laughs> like, so yeah, argument's sake, right after it, I literally, like, I promise you, like, uh, probably two weeks later, I go back out there to go kick it with her and the brother, quotations with my uh, brother and my cousin. So, and it was like one of those things. Like, you know, like, I guess it's like the toxic stuff or excitement. It was very exciting. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm in it. Let's go. You know? <laughs> You're like, so, yeah, I'm a really to- awkward guy, but I love some crazy Russian shenanigans. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> like, you know, it's like honestly weird. And it's like, and I get it. And it's like most people end up like kind of like floating on, off of that. And for me, it's, that was like awkward. Cause like I stayed, I'm in the back room and I'm like, 
That's why I'm like, I promise you, it's like random stuff. Like y'all really out here torturing people for money, and I'm like, and you just walk me in here like I'm just this part of the crew, the only black guy in here, part of the goddamn crew. I'm like, <laughs> that story is All wild, right. Andre. That's a wild story. I, a question, or that I like to ask to kind of get a story like that is, what's the craziest or um, thing you've ever done for love, or even the most romantic? Sometimes because you know us fighters, we can be. Real wild. And that's a perfect example. It's like, not only did you have a wild night with a random Russian girl and some espionage, but you were like, I'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got you. <laughs> so do, well, you rem- um, do you remember doing anything super romantic or super crazy that you look back now? You're like, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> I see. So like, I got two of them. And it's like, which one will end up fitting? So the one that actually like broke my or broke me, it was... Uh, oh. I could argue me say like it was like my first like love like you know <clears throat> and it's like argument sake right because like when you get out of the high school and you know who you're dating it's like all right that's who we were with type of deal so <laughs> so in this situation I have ne- I just haven't asked her out because it was like towards the end and I was like all right you know I'm gonna kind of make that step to ask her out and all that other stuff um, granted we already did like other random things I don't know why we just didn't classify as us dating already because but... you're young you know you yeah. just like and, and I mean even nowadays it's like you fuck first and then you're like oh uh, what's your name yeah <laughs> <And I'm> like, <laughs> so, it's all backwards <laughs> like, and so that was like where I was at I was like alright uh, all right, I'm gonna do something romantic so I ended up doing this like uh, I want to call it like a quest it was like a little quest thing like hey here's a letter and give the letter and then they like kind of like Oh, uh, okay. I forgot like what what they ended up like calling it, but it almost like, like a scavenger like, hunt type thing. Yeah, there you go. Scavenger okay, hunt. cool, that, that's cool. What it is. That's what I was looking for. So I ended up doing this. It, everything ended up leading to my car. Like you know, at the time I had a, a Ford Ranger, so okay. it was to my truck. So you know, um, and I was like, yeah, you know, uh, if you end up picking up this uh, rose in front of you, you know, end up seeing it. There's a letter. All right, go over here. And then, you know, hey, go over here, you know, so she's yeah, doing yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, so yeah. Like, and, you know, <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's good. And note this, it's like uh, my cousin, one of my cousins was with me because he was dating uh, a friend, right? And he was like, yeah, you know, we both had the game plan. Like, yeah, she's going to love it. Like, yeah, yeah she's going to love it. <laughs> she's going there, zigzagging, zigzagging. She gets to the truck. And it was like, in the middle of it, it was a rose and then a letter would you date me? Yes or no? Oh, right? that's a yeah, dog. That's, that's Ramon. That's Ramon. Yeah. He starts crying, right? And I'm like, oh, she loved it. Yeah, she's crying. She hated it. She hated it? Me, I want you to ask me like a normal man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what the heck? What kind of girl was this? <laughs> she was very tough at, at the time because when she hit me with that, I said, wow. I said, I did all that. And then, you know, her best friend was like, like you tripping like that was like really cute da, yeah da, da. my cousin me and then, you know it's like i ended up doing it like yeah man so i'm over, like i promise you when she started crying because it was like a good 45 second tears and i'm like even gave her a hug with it <laughs> like, and you yeah. thought she was like happy tears happy tears and she was like i was like so yes no she gets you asking me like a normal man i said wow okay. wow so, like, and now that, that that part right there, and like it literally, like that hurts a it, little. It, it did. It hurt. It hurt. It, I ain't gonna lie. It hurt me like mm-hmm. really bad. It's like I like, tried fucking it, hard, like, woman. Yeah, you know, I was like, I put my heart to it. You know, because uh, and, and not only that, it, like it reminded me of this one uh, in my uh, elementary years. It was like my first like girl that I liked, and I was like, hey, do you like? Uh, I was like, what's your favorite Power Ranger? Oh, uh, the Pink Ranger or the Yellow? Yeah, and then she like writes it in the middle, like. I don't like watch Power Rangers. Oh like, my god, you're like <laughs> <laughs> So it brought me back to that, right? <laughs> Childhood <laughs> trauma and shit. I'm like, oh so I was like, I know we ain't gonna work, but, <laughs> but, That's like, but so cute, sad. so I'm, I'm gonna kinda run with it, you know. But I don't watch Power Rangers. I, yeah, I don't watch Power Rangers. She literally like she wrote it in the middle. Like, you know, it's just like the I was like red right or the pink one or the yellow one. She wrote it right in the middle, like <laughs> perfect lining and everything you broke know. your little boy heart yeah, broke my heart and i was like all right don't i was like um you know don't mess with that and i was like i learned a lesson and then i try to revamp it and then i learned that lesson and then like that line from there was all right i'm just not going to be really doing like romantic stuff and if i do it's going to be that we're already together and we're already like, you know established then, there you go yeah <laughs> what do you end up wasting some my of these heart. chicks don't appreciate it no they don't yeah they don't and it, it's like and for me, it's like, all right, that, that hurts. You know, <laughs> like it hurts, but 
so you are you, you are romantic say thank you thank yeah you. you are romantic well so as far as competition and sex goes do you abstain before the fight do you wait do you have any kind of ritual at all well see i'm still like trying to figure that out so i'm like one time i'll test it and then the other time i won't like mm-hmm. you know but you've had, um, hey, you've had plenty of fights. Like, you, did yeah. you test it enough? You're like, I'm still in the testing phases. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Need to have more sex? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, it, it all kind of, like, uh, depends. Like, because, um, uh, like, the last one, I, uh, last one that I was dating and everything, uh, it was a situation where sometimes I would be like, all right, I can't do it for, like, three weeks. But then be like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm just, like, kind of, like, crack. And then I end up cracking. Three weeks? Up three situation. weeks? Yeah, it's normally I, I wait for like three weeks out. Okay, you. Um, I think you actually are. That's the longest I've heard because most people on here, men and, and women, they always say, "Ah, eh, like I, I don't abide by any of that." You know, if I want to have sex, I have sex, whatever. But Tito Ortiz, he said he abstains two weeks before the fight, and I think now you are three weeks. So I'm like, oh, that's a long time. Like yes. What is your what is your um, what is your uh, thought process behind that? Is it just like a personal preference, or do you think do you feel a difference? Um, I will go ahead. It's like more of a mental state state of mind. It's kind of like a hunger, you know. Oh, like, uh, okay. Like when you're like uh, cutting weight. Uh, but so I guess I when I said I broke it down, I got it down to the moment of testing stages. But it's 35 that I wait 30, uh, you know, three weeks. But if I'm at 45, I kind of play with it like i might do it if it's like you know if she's with me like if my like le- like the love is with me and everything all right i might do it and i won't feel like any type of way because i'm cutting to 45 my 45 yeah. is like easy cuts for me yeah but now 35 it's like that like i said it goes to that mental state of i gotta like starve myself like hey i'm hungry and at the same time i'm this and if i go ahead like you know how uh uh rocky you know women um weak in the legs oh yeah you know? yeah 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 you know and yeah. stuff like that and it's yeah. like are you cutting mad weight yeah it is weakening or at least that's the mindset that i have yeah and it probably need not even like that but you know, but, you look, know like, i always I say if you think that abstaining for x amount of days helps you then it does because you yeah. know it's fighting is so fucking mental right if sure. you know ronda rousey thinks that having as much sex as possible is what's going to work for her then obviously that's what works for her, right? So it's it's just mental. It's personal preference, and if you believe that that's what's going to work for you, then it probably does. Yeah, that's it. and that's and that's why I'm like, uh, at 35, three weeks, 45 testing stages, and it'd be funny too. It'd be like, I thought you can't do this. I'm like, I know, but I'm cutting to 45. It's it's it's, it's just a deeper meaning to me. Just understand and bend uh, over. It. Uh, <laughs> honestly, yeah. Uh, no, it's honestly, honestly, that's. Only fighters or, you know, maybe boxers, only someone who has had to cut or drop, you know, a certain amount of weight class will understand how much you change. Because when you like take when you take so much away from yourself, so many little pleasures, you know, you become a different person. You're not as happy. You're not. You know what I mean? Like food or relaxation. It's just like cutting to a super low weight, uh, super low weight class. For me, it's 125. When you're cutting that low, you're like, for me personally, and I, you tell me if it's the same, but I feel like I'm miserable most of the time. Like, you know, And then I make weight, still miserable, and then I eat, you know, and you, you still kind of feel like shit because you, you know, did so much shit to your body. And then you fight and you win and you're like, okay, I'll do it again. But it's a really fucked up process, you know? It really is. It really is. It kind of <laughs> like reminds me of like the whole, like, you know, like I was telling straight with the Russians, like. All this is weird. Anybody else would probably walk away from it, but here I am. Hey, I'll see you next week. Da, 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 you know, and it's like, like you know, something in that like, you know, state of mind for me. Um, so I end up feeling it, and it's like I don't even eat the week of the weigh-ins. Like you know, wait, you don't at, eat at all like, at thirty-five? Not like or because I was cutting wrong. I'll just go ahead and yeah. do it that way. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah. So anything I ate, I always like threw it back up. So it'll be me like if I end up argument's sake of this was like my juice of um, on Monday, this is what I'm drinking all the way throughout. So meaning whatever's in this is what I'm drinking for the whole week. Yeah. Oh, like you have that. to ration your, your liquids. Ration. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ration. Like, you know, cause it was like, and if I ate, I'm throwing it up. So it was like more fluids for me that I was end up doing. So I was like doing it wrong, but it was at the same time, <clears throat> certain people can do it. Like, you know, it was, it was good for me early in my career, but later in the career, it kind of like started like, you know, I'm like, you started to see it. Like, 
got to the moment where I'm like stressed out and had like a mini stroke type ordeal, you know, because I was like so stressed. And then like, that's where it came down to that partner thing where your partner's supposed to have your, you know, like that little, hey, you know, you're supposed to be my yang or, you know, whatever the, the, the opposite of yeah. pulling out the yeah. activity that I have, you know? So, and since that wasn't working, cause it's like, like I stated, I pissed that person off. So that person already hates my ass. So it's like, all right. This is where I'm at. I'm in this awkward loop and I can't eat. And then next you know it, you want to have sex, but you can't do that because you yep. you're cutting yep. down to 35. And it's like, and that's like, I can't break the rule in my head because if I break the rule, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know, I'm like awkwardly floating everywhere in the mental state of mind of, of things. You know, I, I want to ask a really personal question. You told me to be honest. I'm going to hit you with it because I did talk to another fighter. I forget what male fighter was on here. But when you're cutting so much weight, you're, you're just fucking your body up. And obviously you and I have both done it the wrong way because sometimes you take a fight. It's last minute and there's only one way to do it. And it's the wrong way. Yeah. And it's hard. And you, sometimes you're between in a rock and a hard place financially and you just got to fucking do what you got to do. Right. <clears throat> but with that said, guys need a certain amount of energy and, you know, oomph to get it up. Does uh, cutting so much weight ever affect boners? You know what I mean? Because I've had another guy on here talk about, you know, erections and getting, you know, when you're depleting your body, like, is that ever an issue? Weight well, cutting, weight cutting, weight cutting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like weight cut, weight cut, weight cut, weight uh, cut, wiener. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's actually kind of funny because I actually was in that situation where it was after the day after my fight, like you know, not in the weight cut because you know it's like uh, the time that I'm even thinking about sex is at 45, and it's like okay, yeah, hey, everything works. And when I go down to 35, like that whole week, I think it's like one of those mindsets of. As soon as I'm done, it's like, all right, I'm about to go ahead and jack off. Like, yeah. you know, I'm about to get one off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then after you, after you eat and rehydrate, right? Yeah, then right you, that's eat, what I'm rehydrate. saying. It's like you can't yeah. do, you can't, you don't even want all the cool stuff like sex or food. It's like you're so dehydrated. All you want is some sugary, delicious, sour. Yeah. You know, like I always yeah, crave like, like soda. Soda for you. For me, I always want like fresh juices, like fresh squeeze juices. I'm like, give it I to me. That. I that. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, like Mountain Dew for me. I'm like, all right. I'm Mountain, Mountain Dew? Dew? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know why. And everybody is like, you know, like this. They do this and do that. And I'm like, no, no. But that, <laughs> no, I, I, I think that goes back to if you think Mountain Dew is your fucking go juice, Mountain Dew is, does it for you, right? Yeah. That's that especially be a like slogan. <laughs> <laughs> like Mountain Dew. Do it for you. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Okay, okay. Yeah, so no? if you're at 45s versus 35s, it, it, it's different. Oh, yeah. Definitely different. Uh, 45, and you know, because I'm one of those people, because like, uh, like I stated, if I'm like single, uh, they'll go for like times where I'm not doing anything. Yeah. You know? But a relationship, especially if I'm not seeing the woman for a while, like right now, I'm like, my lady lives in um, Arizona, right? And so that's like all that time of not doing anything until I go out there or she comes out here. It's like mm-hmm. one of those things. And then when I get out there, hey, it's like on forever. Like, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, you got so much energy. I'm like, yeah, dude. Like at the end of the day, it is her. Like you know, it's like I, have, I haven't done anything. You know, now is that time to like, like let me float. Yeah. Just let me fly. I just tell her like, yeah. let me fly. I am a bird. Let me let me out my cage and let me do me. You know. Yeah. And then it's like it's like that. So that's like the energy of you know from the whole weight cut of what's going on and everything at 45, especially. You know, but 35. My thing, like, especially after my fights and everything, ain't nothing working. I'm nothing like, working. On, talking to it in the shower. Wake up. <laughs> and, on, and honestly, I understand that so much, even though I'm not a, a male, because I just know how fucked up my body is when we're depleted that much. And I'm just like, yeah. so, okay, you have a pretty cool girlfriend right now who understands the fight life, right? But in the past, yeah. you know, what kind of conflicts has fighting caused in your relationship? Because we all know it takes a really understanding person to be a, a partner to a fighter, a professional fighter. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, um, like, I end up stating, um, because right now, like, the side of, like, the, the my lady right now, she got a little glimpse of it mm-hmm. where, um, granted, it was, like, the whole, the bare knuckle, I had to cut down to 45, so it wasn't 35, oh. she didn't get the 35. Part, but she got the 45. She got 45 yeah, dick, yeah, not 35 yeah. dick. Thank God. Yeah. 45 <laughs> dick is real good. 35. Yeah, uh, I'll see you in 10 pounds. No, let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Okay. But yeah, so, you know, she, like, she caught that side of me, right? And, like, she caught the whole, all right, you weight cutting and, like, a lot of awkward things. Because, you know, it, for some odd reason in life, especially for fighters, the week of the weight cut or the week of uh, weights and everything, or weights, but uh, scaling, you got to, you know, got to make the weight. Mm-hmm. 
that every awkward problem starts to occur. Like, you know, it could be like a flat tire or oh, random, yeah. you, know, you, you, know, you lose your keys. It's mm-hmm. random things. And, you know, and you got to end up remembering if you, especially if you're living with your, you know, your loved side or you talk to them, you know, you kind of have to like scope as in, all right, this is how I got to like make sure I get, end up giving her positive energy, especially if I'm texting her and she's at work and everything, you know, no one wants to hear nothing but negative stuff. But at the mm-hmm. same time, they want you to, basically speak so it doesn't so they have the understanding of how they move around you how you move how things is so it's like i'm like talking to her but it's like i'm giving her the light side but she knows there's more to it but she can't push it because she knows that i'm weight cutting yeah so now picture that constantly happening basically every other month like you know just argument sake i'm cutting I'm fighting oh everything. yeah because you fight a lot so it's you not see? like your partner has to deal with it once or twice or three times a year you're trying to do seven and then so that so it's like you get that prep she, she, she prep you know she's ready for it but it's like the same time so like this is where that true soulmate or not true soulmate now ends up kicking yeah like, uh, like the last one she she couldn't mm-hmm. and she couldn't hang and it was one of those like i'm doing everything to make you happy but they're not seeing or she wasn't seeing that what she's seeing is oh yeah you're just frustrated and you're mad and you know this or that and i gotta go and yeah all that other stuff and she's focused on like, what she's not getting versus what extra you're putting into on top of being a fighter and a daddy and making ends meet and whatever so yeah yeah make everybody happy and it's like and it's like granted like she'll probably catch on it like in the future but we didn't work because she didn't try to understand it like at first she was there with it but you know, again, I'm fighting so much that it's happening and happening and happening. And the whole thing is like, I'm trying to get us this, this and that. And I'm trying to make you happy. And it's like, I'm trying to make our boy happy or whatever the case is. I'm yeah. trying to do everything. And it's like one of those moments where you just wish they could just sit down and, you know, spoon you. I like to be spooned. I'm going to be real. <laughs> I'm that guy that likes to be spooned. I just like really? side swipe the mess out of it. Yeah. You, you, like, a, you like a little spoon position every yeah, once in a while. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like, you know, because I'm like the type like, like you know, I'm, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cold. Like, you know, I'll tell her, like, you know, I'll be telling my lady like now, like, you know, when she like grabs me or holds me, whatever the case is, I'll be like, yeah, I like the spoon stuff. Like, you know, that's a turn on because it lets me know that you've got my back. Like, yeah. Sometimes I'm by myself and I need to be held, you know, and, you know, so anytime like I'm with her, she does that and she'll just randomly just hold me and just say, you know, hey, I love you. Like, I right, small things like that. I like that. I you love know? that she so much. Hand. I love that. Okay, weird, freaky question. Have you ever been asked to do something too weird in the bedroom that you were like, hold on, girl. No, not not me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you my debut of this one, right? Mm. And I know it's like most people think it's like it's, it's normal or it's, hey, it's cool. But um, one time, this is like years ago, but one time, it was the first time I ever did this. She, uh, a woman asked me to uh, slap her, right? That's. I feel I'm like thinking- that's very normal nowadays, no? Oh, oh yeah, it's normal now. Okay, but then it wasn't normal. Oh, when was two, this? When was this? This is like, I want to say 2000 and end of 2015 or mid 2015. Okay, so that is a while like, ago. Yeah, yeah. So it's like approaching, but it was just the debut of it because when I held the conversation with my cousin with this, he starts laughing at me, right? <laughs> okay, and then it was like the argument sick that like, it happened to him like a few days later, right? Okay, okay. So he brings it back, and it was like, <laughs> remember that time that you told me? Tell me why two days later I asked the same thing. So I think it was like the approach of everybody's like asking for it, right? Yeah. And she ends up telling me slap her. And I'm talking like one, I'm like one of these people like, hey, I don't hit women type of ordeal, you know? Okay, yeah. Uh, no matter what the situation, whatever it is. Good stance. Right. Yeah, you know, so it's like she goes, slap me. Huh? So this is the middle of like my you know, mad strokes and everything. And all I hear is slap me. Huh? <laughs> so I said, slap. I said, okay. So I go ahead and do this, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Huh, right? Just barely. Yeah. You know, so all she gets, what type of shit is that? Huh? Ooh, ooh. I said, slap me. So I'm like, so a little, little bit harder. A little harder, a little harder, yeah. Just a little harder. What'd she say? She said, what the fuck? I'm like, huh? Oh. Yeah. So there's no, like I said, I'm awkward with awkward stuff. So my response is, is just like this, huh? What? Huh? <laughs> okay. I said, slap me harder. I'm like, okay. Oh, I popped her. Like, okay. I, I get, it, was, it was a good. Oh, go on. Right. I looked at her and I thought I like. It was like one of those like. I ended up like slapping a whole new person there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I slapped the kinky out of her. <laughs> yeah, I, I slapped it out. And it was like, 
I said, you know, he kind of like, I stopped, like, you okay? You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, she, <laughs> she wasn't so aggressive anymore. She's like, that's wasn't good. So that's good. That's good. We're good. Like, We're good. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, and I'm not gonna lie. And that might've been like a kill off for me because this is my first time ever doing it. So I'm like, man, that was awkward. And I, I ended to the moment, like, I'm already feeling awkward. So I told her, like, that was awkward in the middle of these strokes. Like, yeah. hey. That's kind of that's awkward. You <laughs> know, having this conversation. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Mid-stroke. Like, I'm, I'm rocking like this. Like, hey, that's kind of awkward, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You know, she's looking at me like, yeah, you know, I liked it though. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm like, back in my head, like, like, so note this. It was so awkward to me that I was thinking about it. Like, it got to this moment where the key side of, she starts giving me head, right? And she was giving me head for about, 45 minutes. I promise you. Wow. 45 minutes. Fucking girls in all stone. Um, <laughs> and yeah, this time I'm like, I don't even know. I already knew why it was 45 minutes because at 45 minutes I was sitting here thinking like, oh damn, I really slapped her. Like, damn, she okay. Like she. That's what you were thinking ball. about while you were. The whole time. The whole time. And I'm like. <laughs> I'm You're like, mama, oh, mama didn't raise me okay? like that. Mama didn't raise me to hit women. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm, I'm, like every possible thing you could possibly think of is popping in my head. But like my, um, but you know, I want to like, I was hard. I was, yeah. For some reason, it was just there. Well, you, you had a girl sitting, between your legs doing stuff, so, you know. Doing stuff. <laughs> 45 minutes, I promise you, and I timed this shit. And it was like, because wow. I just like I said, I was like, this is going to be a conversation. I was like, I'm really about to bring this up to my cousin, my brother and my cousin. I'm about to tell him. <laughs> I'm thinking about this whole time. I'm like, like, you know, I was like thinking like, dang. I wonder if they did this because it's like, because me, this, this, this is awkward. This is different. This is a new world. I'm like in a whole new world right now. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, wow, this is different. You guys see the stars, and you know, I'm like, <laughs> first of all, like, I yeah. want to say we need to work on some like uh, exercises to keep you present in the moment because I feel like you should be focused on other things right now. A hundred percent. Like I have ADHD. Like you know, or, you know, like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so I'm like sideswiping. I'm like mind blown, and I'm like, oh, it didn't. <laughs> And like the best, the kicker of this part, it was like, uh, uh, was that the best head you ever had? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, yeah. But my mind, it's like, I'm still on the fact that I just slapped the it's shit the out slap. of The slap, right yeah, I'm on the slap. Oh, my God. You know? I'm like, I'm on that. And she's talking about, yeah, you know, that's the best you ever had, huh? Like, you know, the God Queen. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm still <laughs> thinking of the fact that I just got done slapping you, you know? I was like, so I gotta go home, right? <laughs> I was like, Dude, well, I gotta oh, leave, <laughs> right? I probably <laughs> look, and I'm like, hey, I gotta go. I promise you, as soon as I get back, or as soon as I get in the car, I'm like, my brother doesn't pick up the phone, so I call my cousin. I'm like, hey, random question: Have you ever slapped a woman? <laughs> you know? And they're like, what? Like, he was like, what? Yeah, Zach was like, what? No, nah. like, wait, what happened? And I was like, she just asked me to slap her in the middle of the strokes, and. I was so I was like I'm gonna tell you right now I had I had four attempts and I fucked up all three. <laughs> the last one I got her right. <laughs> got her. <laughs> I was like, dude, I think I slapped the shit. I was like, I slapped the um, I, I was like, I slapped the whole new person in there. <laughs> oh what? So he's laughing, and I promise you, it was like two days, three, three days later, it happened to him, and he was like, man, it's different. I like it. So he's loving it. Me, I'm over here on that like shit. It was still like yeah, at the time it was still confusing. I'm like, all right. But then now it's like, all right, now I know it's a normal thing. And it's like, oh, yeah. man, it's go time for a deal. But I yeah, mean, I that. as, that's a great story. I love that so much. But, you know, like, obviously you understand this. And just to put it out there for you guys listening, you're like, oh, I want to slap a chick. Always ask for consent. Don't be just slapping a chick out here. OK, like, <laughs> well, yeah, he's having a pot. Yeah, actually, I, I would just wait and let her bring it up. That's a safe bet. Yeah. You know, don't be yeah. like, can I hit you? Like, oh, I'll be like, I'm out. <laughs> I'm fucking out. Red flag. All right. <laughs> red, and then, flag. And red flags. And, that's, and imagine the conversation you have on the way home. Like, hey, just ask to slap me, huh? Dude, that's <laughs> weird. Yeah. Speaking of red flags, is there uh, a pet peeve that you have in the bedroom? Uh, so. Oh my gosh. Another story. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So it's uh it's one of those things of like having like if it's a quickie it's it's cool but if it's one of those like hey we're about to have sex everything gotta come off like it's one of those things okay like, you hey, like to be naked 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 okay like, you know um so one time it's it's socks I don't know oh what it is. I hate when a guy leaves his socks on that is so fucking I weird none that. and it's to me it's like I it's so uncomfortable to me I will literally in like mid stroke stop just to take off my socks or like you know whatever the case is yeah. like hey I gotta take the socks off you know. So there was one time, 
this lady had her, or this chick had her socks on. This is a long time ago too, but she had her socks on. And, or no, my bad. My bad. She didn't have socks on, but I thought she had socks on. Okay. So just know. So, <laughs> so this is just how bad the feet was. But I didn't see the feet. All right. Wait, I'm wait. Like, well, real quick, real quick. Are, you said how bad the feet were. Like, uh, bad the feet. Like, uh, um, like dry. Poorly kept. Poorly kept. Let's okay. Th- okay. Keyword. Poorly okay. kept. Okay. So in this, I'm like, we're in the middle of it, going at it. And it comes down to this moment of, like, uh, I don't know what it is. I like to like, grab the foot to put it up. Right? All right. You know? oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's where I'm at. I yeah. go to grab the foot to pull it up, and it didn't feel like normal feet. Right? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a pulls, a, like a, pulls a big foot up. He's like, whoa, yeah. whoa, like a hairy right. ass big foot with cords. Like, as I did it, I'm like, <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of like still dark. You know, it's like mid dark, so I can't really like, see what's going on. I just know that my feel, like, you know, my touch game. It's like, all right, hey, touch the feet. I'm pulling it up. I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, sexy voice, right? Yeah. Take your socks off. Right? They are. Huh? Oh, my God. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh, my what? bad. My bad. Wow. And, and it was so bad that I was like, instantly, everything like cut off. Like, it wasn't, you know, hard no more. I'm like, hey, this ain't oh, just working. Oh, so it was, it was a was, huge turn off. Yeah, that was, that was, that was the number one. Cause I, the whole time, cause now it's like, one, I feel like I just insulted you. Like I said, I'm not good with awkwardness. So I'm awkward and I made it awkward cause I stopped, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, I kind of turned the light on cause the light was there. It was like, now I got a seat, right? Yeah. She, I'm lying. she had no socks on and that whole time. So I was like, fuck. Oh now no. Like, you know, and so I put her in an awkward situation and then in the middle of it, my, uh, my cousin kind of ended up taking one for the team that day, right? Okay. Uh, so one of my cousins, like, one of my cousins ended up taking one for the team that day. So, <laughs> so it was one of those moments, like, you know, he, you know, he brings it up to me, like, what do you mean he took one for the team? Let's be real. Is it the, the, is it the past? But so he did he like, get tag teamed in, in or what? What's going on here? <laughs> like, you know, like the no, she had a friend. She brought a friend. But okay. She wasn't the attractive one. Okay. Right? And, oh. Yeah, so he got was like, it, got it. And then, you know, it was like he kind of was in it. And I was like, and again, like some time ago, like I was like, I was feeling really bad about it. But I'm over here and now I'm feeling even worse because of the socks thing. So now it's like a whole awkward situation because it's like, like, I don't know what else you want to do because I don't <laughs> yeah. want to play games. <laughs> so it's I'm like, done. <laughs> yeah, you know, can y'all, y'all go home. <laughs> I love that story so much. I I feel like this is the perfect transition for the lightning sex round. Uh, For you listening at home who are uh, not familiar with this, it's a rapid fire yes or no segment where I ask Andre what he's into and he just says yes or no. But Andre, if you want to elaborate, because sometimes I'll ask a question and the guest will be like, wait, I need to clarify. I'm like, oh, feel free. (laughs) Okay. 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 Here we go. Lightning sex round with Andre. Do you dirty talk in bed? Yes. Spank or like to be spanked? Spank. Biting? I am a biter, yes. Choking? <laughs> Definitely I'm a choker. I like to choke and I like to be choked. Okay. Choke the shit out of me. What about threesomes? So, it's... So, I'm going to go 50-50 on that one. So, this is that part I'm going to elaborate. Okay. Like, I never had a threesome. Never? Never, never and that's is... like the mind, Like, the closest threesome that I ever had. So, I'm going to tell you this. Okay. It was a woman that ended up uh, with me and... Uh, one of the other family members mm-hmm. uh, ended up giving us a foot hand job. A right? foot <laughs> hand job. Hold on, hold on. Burr, burr, wait, hold on. Need so to like this? a foot. Hey, oh, I'm, wait. Yeah, I'm sitting on seat. Uh, wait, I'm thinking like a foot hand job, but you mean a so, foot job? Just a foot job? Yeah, foot job. Bro, I'm talking like jacking us off with her, just her feet. Splits. Yeah, with her feet. She's in the splits. She has one foot over there and one foot over here, and she was like. Both you guys at the same time? Same time. So and that was like the closest threesome I ever feet. had. And, so and I was like, I was like feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, she, 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 she had skills. I was like, I'm not hey, even mad at her. I'm just impressed. I'm just impressed. You <laughs> <laughs> did it. And I was like, hey. And I promise you, it's like, it's one of those like random stories, but that wow. was like the closest threesome I ever had. But okay. I never had like, you know, so it's like, hey. 
I'm so, <laughs> so happy you elaborated on that. Okay. Uh, well, move it along here. Uh, do you watch porn? Yes. Okay. Now, this is a perfect question. Uh, any fetish is like a foot fetish? We have, let me see. I would say, I, arguably, a booty fetish. Oh, leg fetish. I'm a leg fetish. I like legs. Oh, really? Legs. What part of the leg? Yeah. You a thigh guy? Uh, you a calf guy? What do you got? <laughs> Yeah, you a calf guy? Uh, no, <laughs> no it's a calf whole, guy. I would say the whole thing. I would say the whole thing because, like, one thing is, like, my lady, that's, like, one of the uh, attributes of, that I love about her is her legs. She doesn't like it, and it's, like, her legs that pops into her butt. So it's, like, I'd be there, like I said, not besides the fact that I'm sending her, like, all types of sex memes every day, just to let it know it's <laughs> on my sex mind. Sex memes. Like, <laughs> like, I send her every day. It's, like, if you like, ever just say, hey, let me look at your DMs for me, you'll end up seeing nothing but sex memes of me sending, right? Sex <laughs> memes. <laughs> and then, you know, okay. and it'd be like, and it'd be, like, from that sex memes to the moment of me telling her, like, hey, I love your Aww. legs. Like, I'm there, I'm licking her legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All day. So it's, like, that's Got just it. how I, I love it. Like, all right. How about um, bodily fluid fetish? Mm, explain bodily fluids. Are we talking like could be anything? Fluid? Like a like I like her to sit on my face, and especially when it comes, yeah, stuff like that. So yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, what about bondage? So it could be like ropes, blindfolds, handcuffs, anything like that. I'm definitely into those. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, w role playing. <laughs> 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 I'm going to say yes to role playing. Just the fact that back in my time, I was like a stripper. So it was like one of those. I did my thing. You used to be and a stripper? That's all I was. I was what? Like, Super fun fact. <laughs> cool fun fact. I was the shit too. So, Dang. How, but, long were, how long were you a stripper? I was there with it about two years. And it was actually like supposed to be like a funny gig. Because like most people end up saying like this, like argument sick. I have only fans. I made an only fans page back then. Like, you know, because people say, hey, you're not going to do it. I'm like, I'll do it right now. Nice. So I did it. Yeah. You know, so, okay. Um, so I went from there and also, uh, so like, so the stripper was like two years, but it was like here and there and it'd be like surprises of, hey, there's a birthday. Do you want to? Yeah. Like, gotcha. Okay. There. Stripper, stripper, like, you know, uh, Thunder Down Under. I was up in there. Awesome. Definitely. You know, that's so, okay. <laughs> I love that. That's just what I was buff and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> I was like, oh, this shit. But I was young, like, you know, so I was like, I had the body. I was like super athletic and strong and stuff like that. So I was like, hey, let me uh, jump up in it and do it. And I could dance. Dude. So that was a fun fact. So I am. I bet. In. Yeah, I seen your I seen your videos dancing, and that was probably such a fun job. I might need to bring you back on to continue <laughs> that conversation. But let's continue with the lightning <laughs> sex round, I guess. Uh, okay, butt stuff on you or a partner? Butt stuff? Yeah. On, on, on my partner. All right. Can't touch my <laughs> Can't touch my butt. butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like you know, only closest you can get is like to pull me in deeper. That'd, that'd be, all right, be all right. <laughs> oh, uh, cheeks only. <laughs> cheeks only. Do you use sex toys? Now I wish I sometimes I actually feel like I, I I will be into using them in the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fun. It's All right. Ever been, been to a sex club or a swingers party? Not a swingers um, um, party, but a sex club I have, and it was one of those. <laughs> I actually have like awkward pictures where I actually got my like, outfit from uh from like one of the sex shops. Like, oh really? Home. What did you wear? <laughs> okay, if, uh, it was uh, leather. Wow! It was definitely super leather, and I believe I had the uh, the mask on. I have to end up looking for uh, the picture. Yeah, but, send me that picture. <laughs> yeah, so I was like super leathered out. Okay, awesome. And then, um, are you a lingerie lover? I love lingerie, just the fact that I'm able to take it off. Got it. I'm able to take it off as like a super turn on, and always like a uh, like I, I, my lady. I was telling her like, yeah, she pops something else, I can take it off. Just, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, and then body hair. Yay or nay? Uh, it depends, I guess. I, I prefer not to, but I do like the, uh, the hairy uh, bush from like in the like, you know, 70s. Yeah, 70s here and there, but you got to like mix me up because if it's always like that, it's like, ah. Okay. But, oh. And, you know, it's like, because you never know. There might be this, they might have that no shade November. All right, I'll, I'll still fuck with it, you know? All but, right. But, you got to mix me up. You got to mix me up. Okay, sounds good. And ever been caught having sex or masturbating? I have been caught having sex, uh, masturbating. No one have caught me yet. We want to share that being caught story with us, or maybe maybe well, next show. I would say it depends on you, because like it's a good story, you know. Because <laughs> it actually led into the moment of how I got into the stripping and actually got oh, yeah, offered. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we gotta hear it. And before you tell okay. this story, a very important question: 
What was your stripper name? <laughs> all right, so I had two names. So one, some them used to call me Genuine. So this is a full fact. But all right. In my high school or college years, uh, they were calling me Genuine. Like I was literally running track, and they're like Genuine. <laughs> my stripper. Okay. Right? And then there's uh, Daddy Long Legs. Daddy, Daddy Long, Long Legs. legs. I like Daddy that Long. one. <laughs> this is like full fact. That was my thunder down under. Daddy That's Long great. Legs. Damn. But Genuine was like everybody else. I had Daddy Long show. Legs is probably the greatest. That's great. <laughs> see? You see? So see, look. So <laughs> All right, let's hear this story about how you got caught having sex, and it led to you being uh, a stripper in your young years. Okay, so are you gonna say so? This is what ended up happening. This is uh, another situation of me not asking. So uh, me not asking, like, hey, do you have somebody or whatever? Ah, I know mm-hmm. is I'm on my way. I'm out there. I'm there. I'm in mid power strokes and the whole nine. Her screaming, hi, da 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 da. Right, and then we're like at a hotel ish type of deal. It's like L.A. Like it's. Hotel vibe, but it's like apartment, I guess, whoever the case is. Okay. So I'm in there. Ooh, ooh, right? The whole nine. Get it. Bumping, the whole nine. The whole nine. Dude walks in. Now it's like one of those situations. Do you finish? <laughs> no, you <laughs> don't you finish. Stop? What? You know, <laughs> eye contact. Eye contact. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Check your you know. Wow. Wow. You know, and I'm like, and like I said, it's but naked time. So it's like one of those, yeah. he hasn't moved, I ain't moved. You know, I'm still moving, but he's like at the door with it. What the fuck is going on? And I'm like, bro, <laughs> bad. Like, you know, it's my husband. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so now I get to the moment of, it's like one of those, like I said, it's eye contact. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you move, then I'm going to go. Type of deal. Mm-hmm. He moves, basically naked, zigzag. You know, I slipped this dude. He ends up. Falling. You I'm, you I'm, naked I'm, you naked juked this guy. Naked. I'm gone. So wow. check the on, on status. I'm wow. gone. Right. And note this: we're like on like a top floor. It's like a high floor, so it's like no, you're not jumping from the window down. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, happening. yeah. Like you know, you you're actually zigzagging and going places. So I'm zigzagging, <laughs> naked. Pow, pow, pow. Door partially open. I as he's chasing, or you know, like I hit the corner, and when I hit the corner, there's a door partially open. I run up in it. Boom. I shut the door. I ran into a porn. Shit going on. Whoa. Straight, straight porn. Porn porn status of the tape. They have hosts, the lights, the whole nine. Didn't know. I ran in it and I'm looking. And it was one of those. They stop and look and then they look down. And I'm partially still kind of hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so they're getting the semi uh, picture oh of what's going god. on. Right now, right? Oh my god. Oh my god. And they're looking at me and it was like, and then, you know, because partial art with like the whole comic. So just know that. So it's like yeah. semi. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm looking around and I'm looking and I'm like, oh shit. And it was like, uh, I don't think we had you on the list. So this <laughs> I don't think we had you on the list. Um, but did you want? And I was like, oh no. <laughs> right now there's a dude <laughs> and I need clothes. So, you know, so they ended up like giving me like a, a partial like robe ish. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, one of those things. So I like, I popped it on. And, and from there, that was when I like decided, like, oh, right, you know what I'm saying? From the beginning of the first time I did it, but that time it's like, all right, I definitely got to kind of keep it like, like settled of making sure who I pick and whatnot. To yeah, about. yeah. So well, did you did the porn people direct you into stripping or? All right, so that landed in the moment where they got my number. I say, you know, they like, hey, you know, we'll give you a call. They I'm seen like, your right. wiener and they were like, we'll call <laughs> yeah, you. We'll, we'll call you. We're gonna we'll call you. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> like, <laughs> hey. We like that. You know, I'm like, all right, it's okay. So I'm like thinking like, all right, it's funny. It's a good story. And I'm like, yeah, they ain't going to call me, whatever. Mm-hmm. Fucking around and called me um, a month later. Hey, I don't know if you remember. It's um, Jack from such and such. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, what up, Jack? No, no, no. Yeah, you know, uh, we was wondering if you wanted to come down, you know, just kind of like, you know, uh, kind of like audition for this spot and stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, sure. You know, <laughs> thinking still like a joke. I kind of go down there. But it was like I didn't jump in the porn. It was like an audition to get in. And it yeah. was like, all right, can you uh, get hard right in front of us? I'm like, yeah, boom, boom, boom. You know, like the whole nine. Good they job. Do it. So it was like, the name is on the list. I'm like, I'm about to be in there type of ordeal. And then that kind of like shifted over of, hey, you ever thought about uh, stripping at a private X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll play with it. Mm-hmm. You know? But I'm always doing like, because I'm like one of those, like I said, if you give me the opportunity and I'm like in that mindset, I'll jump. Like, if you don't believe I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'll just show oh, you. You like a challenge. Awesome. 
Yeah, I'm, yeah, I like the challenge. I'm like left or right type of ordeal. Like I normally flip a coin in my head, and if it lands on heads, I'm, I'm heads heads all in, you know. And if it lands on tail, I'm like, all right, whatever. But normally the coin always lands on hell or heads for me, so I'm like, all right, I'll do this. That's right, wild. Do- That's wild. Then you end up doing this trip. <laughs> That's so great. Okay, well, <clears throat> this has been so fun. But the last two segments are a game of fuck, Mary kill, and some fan questions. Uh, so let's get to that, okay? <laughs> Fuck one, marry one, kill one. Go. I think we're done here. Done here. Done here. All right, guys. For you listeners who don't know what fuck, marry, kill is, I'm going to give Andre three names, and he just tells me, out of those three names, who he would fuck, who he would marry, and who he would kill. And we don't want to kill nobody, all right? Public service announcement. It's just a game, guys. All right? All right, Andre. (laughs) So uh, my homies, Pat Kenny and Dan Kenny, helped me come up with this one. Since you are Afro Monkey, we went with the category of ladies with Afros or ladies known for their Afros. So you get the beautiful Alicia Keys, a singer, uh, Carrie Washington, the actress, and Angela Hill, MMA fighter. So fuck one, marry one, kill one. Go. Fuck one, marry one, kill one. All right, I'm marrying Alicia Keys, all right? But look, all these answers is I love my woman Sarah. All right, so, well yeah. So go back in there, Mary Lisa, uh, Angela will definitely probably be the fuck, and I'll go with um, kill Carrie yeah, Washington. Uh, and I, I'm not saying like marry or kill her, but <laughs> yeah, you know, dis dis <laughs> Carrie Washington. All right, yes, but I love you though. All you right. <laughs> Moving on, so we don't get you in trouble at home. Okay, answer the fan questions. <laughs> okay, so these are from your real fans. Uh, first one, oh, actually, before we get into the fan questions, these fan questions are going to be on the UFC Fight Pass platform. So this is exclusive content. But not everyone listening, come on, guys, uh, is uh, signed up with UFC Fight Pass. So for those who are not, where can they find you on your social media, your OnlyFans, and uh, anything else that you want to promote right now? Like I want to promote my OnlyFans, but I got to wait until they start sponsoring me. Okay, I'm okay. Waiting. <laughs> waiting for y'all OnlyFans. But um, <laughs> definitely on uh, Instagram, Day42, so it's D-A-I-I-4-2. And my Twitter, granted that I'm like 50-50 with that, or with that, because I'd be like forgetting. But yeah. I think it is, uh, yeah, it's under Day24 underscore Dre. I believe that's what it is. So it's D-A-I-I-24 uh, underscore Dre. And I feel like you would be the perfect person for TikTok. Do you have a TikTok? I definitely do. Andre okay. Yule. Andre no, Yule. Name, last name. Yeah, yeah so. cuz you're you a dancing fool. You dance it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok partially starting to love me. I'm like starting to get like uh, n- good feedback with um TikTok, so I love them. All right. right we will have all your links in the episode note, guys. If you're driving, you don't need to write anything down. Don't crash. It's fucking rainy today in Orange County. It's so crazy. Over here in Paris as well. It's like raining really hard. Episode 128 with Andre Afro Monkey, aka Daddy Long Legs, aka the former Mr. Highlight, aka Genuine. <laughs> you all, God, that guy. What a, what a funny guy. I'm I'm excited to uh, watch his career unfold, and he seems like he seems like he's in a really good place right now. Very very happy for him. Guys, UFC Fight Pass is the world's premier combat sports streaming service with over 200 live events, the largest fight library in existence, original shows, and more. Sign up for one year and get half off for a limited time at UFCFightPass.com backslash sign up. Next week, man, I'm very, very excited about this guest, Zoll. Her name is Raquel Lionheart Pa'alui Canuto. I really hope I did not butcher that. Probably did. But she is an American Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and a mixed martial artist. I've seen this girl fight in Invicta specifically that I can remember. She fights with that Hawaiian fire. Like the fight. Like, 
Like she gonna kill you. Yeah. You ain't gonna get out of this cage alive, woman. Yeah, like the blood off the glove, sure. I like her so yeah. much. I remember watching her train in Vegas. Um, she married a black belt, you know, and um, she's just a badass guy. So and two black belts get married, or are they a double black belt? <laughs> I don't know. I know any children that they're making are gonna be ninjas. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, they actually run a school out in Vegas. I think it is called Checkmat something in vegas yeah so good for them um yeah guys great episode next week coming up be sure to tune in for that and then as always you can support us by going to our website www.sexviolencewithrebelgirl.com any merchandise you want uh what else is on our website if you oh actually i added this thing if you want like a signed picture you can like click on that and i can um yeah like i'll actually um you know whatever you want me to write you just write it in there and i sign it and you can actually watch me sign it live too it's um uh, i don't know what you call this a company called streamily and they basically like do this for uh fighters or musicians or artists whatever it is it's really cool it kind of takes the legwork out of it but it also allows you guys to directly see us giving your autograph or signing your autograph yeah authenticate it and you know i'm writing it and then i hold it up in the in front of the camera you know Say what up? yeah what's up tyler 225 you know whatever it is <laughs> what's up daddy long legs daddy long legs 667 <laughs> daddy long legs 69 <laughs> Okay, guys, and uh, also support me by checking out my exclusive fan time site. That is AshleyRebelGirl.com for all the spicy pictures and photos. Um, And then if you guys liked this show and you want us to keep doing this show, please help us by, you know, it's free 99. All you got to do is send this podcast that you're listening to right now to a homie, to a family, to your mom. Maybe not your mom. I don't know. Actually, never mind. She might not want a sex podcast. (laughs) But uh, help us. Yeah. Your mom listens? Yes. Does she does? Yes. Oh, Zol's mom listens, yeah. <sighs> Never will be more awkward than when my dad told me at Thanksgiving, oh, I've been listening to your podcast. I was like, Dad. Oh, thanks, Dad. Dad, find another podcast. Dad, if you're listening, stop. Everyone's but mine. <laughs> uh, just kidding. I love you, Dad. Okay. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and for your weekly fan questions. Those were some good ones this week. Special thank you to audio engineer DJ Zol at DJ Zol on Instagram and Tomorrow Kids Studio at Tomorrow Kids Official. And we are always at Sex and Violence with Rebel Girl and myself at Ashley MMA. I really hope you guys like this week's guest. I did. He was super fucking funny. And what do I tell you guys every week? Remember, be kind, be grateful, but don't take shit from anyone. I love you guys. Talk to you next week with a new guest and more tales of sex and violence. Bye.